An ecosystem pond is a pond that utilises plants, rock, pebble, fish or other aquatic animals to create a well-balanced pond. An ecosystem pond should look natural and be easy to maintain. As they say, it works with Mother Nature, not against Mother Nature. The commercially available kits can be quite pricey, so today I wanted to show how I build an ecosystem pond using my own home-built components. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel and website is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website ozponds.com. There are five parts to an ecosystem pond. Number one, a biological filter. This is what keeps the water clean, clear and healthy. Number two is a mechanical filter. This removes larger materials like leaves from the surface of the pond. Number three is aquatic plants. These will help remove nutrients from the water and naturalise the pond. Four is rock and gravel. This will aid in filtration and help hide and protect the pond liner. And five is the fish or other aquatic animals. These will help oversee the aquatic food chain and make sure that everything is kept in balance. The other essentials you'll need are a pump to circulate the water, piping to get the water from the pond into the biological filter, and a liner to hold the water. For the biological filter on this pond, I built a bog filter inside an old plastic drum. I'll put a link to a video I made on how to create these types of filters if you want to check out the nitty gritty. A bog filter works best with a slow flow. When creating streams and waterfalls, it can sometimes be easier to create a high flow filter. Again, I'll link a video that shows how I build a high flow filter on the cheap. My personal opinion is that a bog filter is the best type of biological filter you can add to any pond. But it does need to be sized correctly. This could be anywhere from 10% of the pond volume up to 50% of the pond volume. It really depends on what you plan on keeping inside the pond. A simple ecosystem pond like this for goldfish, a 10% bog filter is fine. A bog filter moves the water slowly up through various sizes of rock and pebble, whereas a high flow filter moves lots of water through biological media such as bioballs and filter sponges. I'll put a link to bioballs in the description so you can see what I'm talking about there. A bog filter filters water very much like nature would, whereas a high flow filter is more similar to how water is filtered in most aquariums. I've got lots of other videos talking about the different types of filters and the advantages and disadvantages, so I won't go into too much detail here. If you want to learn more, just check out those videos I've linked and decide what type of filter you think would be best for you and your pond. Whatever biological filter you decide on, you'll use it to create the headwaters of a stream or waterfall. Water will be pumped from the pond up into the filter and then cascade or flow back into the pond. Here's a terrible sketch of how that looks. The pump sits inside the intake bay or skimmer. We will take a more detailed look at that in a minute. But from there, the water moves through the biological filter is dumped into the stream and returns to the pond. Round and round it goes. Before you start digging, you want to get your biological filter into position. You want it higher than the pond so the water can flow from the filter back into the pond. And then you'll use the dirt from the excavation to create a berm. You don't want to make it too high, you want it more wide than high. At this point you could also bury the plumbing that goes from the skimmer to the biological filter. I tend to run my plumbing inside the liner and then disguise it with rock and plants later on. When digging the pond you really want to create shelves. I like to have three different depths in my ecosystem ponds. If I'm building a pond that's 60 centimetres or two foot deep that would have three different levels one at 20 centimetres, one at 40 centimetres, and the final one at 60 centimetres. You should overdig it a bit, 
because the rock and pebble will shrink the overall size. The shelves give you a nice base to place larger rocks. It also provides great spots to add different types of plants. It's not worth getting a cheap liner and I also like to use a geotextile underlayment. Remember, we're saving thousands of dollars already. We don't want to waste our time with a liner that will fail in a few years. Before I talk about rocking in the pond, we should talk about the skimmer or intake bay. The skimmer will keep the surface of the pond clear of debris. It'll also help collect things like leaves, so you can easily remove them before they sink and start decaying inside the pond. Decaying materials release nutrients, and nutrients feed algae. On this pond, the skimmer is a standard bucket that sits on the edge of the pond inside the liner. There's two large rocks on either side to create a narrow channel for the water to pass through. You'll want to use foam filler or geotextile to fill in any gaps between the rocks and the liner that will force the water through that narrow channel. The pump sits inside the bucket and draws the water from the pond into the skimmer. From the skimmer, it goes up to the biological filter. You can see I drilled a hole to accept the pipework and then lots of smaller holes to allow water to flow into the bucket. I've since tweaked this and now I just use a coarse filter sponge straight over the top. This just makes maintenance much easier than trying to pull that bucket lid off. You could also choose to build an intake bay. That's basically just an oversized skimmer. Being bigger, it can go much longer without maintenance. I'll leave a link to how I built the intake bay on this pond. Again, I use cheap equipment. Rocking in the pond is quite easy. I like to use rocks that are slightly higher than my shelves. So for this pond, I tried to get rocks that would be about 30 centimetres high when I positioned them onto the shelves. That allows a bit of a lip to keep the smaller gravel in place. Here you can see the plumbing line from the skimmer to the bog filter before I covered it with rock and pebble. On the stream or waterfall, you'll need to use a foam filler to force the water over the surface of the rocks Otherwise, it'll just disappear through the gaps between the larger rocks and the liner. On this pond, I use the expensive waterfall foam, but I've since built other ponds using just regular cheap filler foam, and that's been no issue. This footage here is about a year after I built the pond. All the marginal plants are just planted into the gravel inside the pond. The water lilies are in pots as they're heavy feeders. This is the pond today, about three years after I built it. I do have a video on all the different types of plants I like to use in and around my ponds, if you're interested. I originally had the pond stock with small native fish, but I've since changed to goldfish, as I can see them from the kitchen window. All the native fish are now happily living up in my dream pond. Goldfish are a great fish for most people as they're colourful, hardy, cheap and they'll snack on algae if you don't feed them pellet food. However, being bright and colourful, they are susceptible to predators. I've lost quite a few to herons and cormorants. So this pond cost me half the cost of the kit form and mine included all the rock and the pebble. It also cost me a tiny fraction of what I was quoted by a professional contractor to have it built. At the end of the day, filtering the water doesn't need to cost a fortune. It's actually quite simple. I think if you watch the videos that I've linked, anyone can build a decent ecosystem pond. I also have a website with helpful articles, so feel free to check that one out. If it's your first pond, I would start small and learn a little bit about how the water is filtered and what works and what doesn't. It's also easier to make alterations if you aren't happy with something on a small pond. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. If it was, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.